Hey everybody and welcome to another DeFi Kingdoms video. It's been a while and a lot has happened in the meantime, both for DeFi Kingdoms and in my life. I'm back to the Mexican Caribbean after spending some months in the Dominican Republic and I'm eager to get back to creating content. Today I want to share some alpha that I found and we'll take a look at a couple of charts to see where price might be going in the near future. In general the markets have been having a good time, but Jewel, Jade and Crystal have been somewhat lagging. We'll take a look at possible targets if Bitcoin keeps this push going. For now 25k is critical. If we manage to get and stay above, then I imagine there is more steam in this run. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to DeFi Kingdoms. I've had a short hiatus from clicking buttons, but around 3 months ago I restarted my DeFi Kingdoms journey and I have to say that they made a couple of much needed improvements, mostly to reduce the tediousness of clicking quests. I'm up to over 60 heroes now and 16 pets. There's about 15 eggs waiting to be hatched, but it's not worth it for now. More on that later on. I had my DFK fund sitting in Bitcoin Jewel and Bitcoin Clay in the gardens and basically all the income is being reinvested in DFK, either in heroes, in pools or in the jeweler. The fees are getting a bit out of control though on Serendale, also with Clayton moving up in price. I only have my miners and gardeners working there, the fishers and foragers are in Crystalville. It's something that has to be addressed because there is a risk that the rewards of the quest become lower than the cost of transacting. And that's a failing business model in my opinion. We'll have to see where it goes. That's a little recap on what I've done, now let's take a look at some alpha. First up, some data on Sea Jewel. I've been putting some of my yields from the gardens and my miners into Sea Jewel. Also because there's a real possibility that Jewel will have some nice gains soon, more on that later. Long time had some interesting data on what's happening with Sea Jewel and having another 8% APR on Sea Jewel while holding it is a nice bonus. We've seen a steady increase in Sea Jewel deposits, so it's safe to say the new tokenomics are working out. There's some more info in this thread, so I'll include a link to the post in the description below. Oh, and by the way, I've recently, uh, as recent as three weeks ago, uh, started a new Twitter account. It's around trading, DeFi and GameFi, so if that's something you'd like to be informed on, feel free to add me there. It's Jamie Martoyo and the link will also be in the description below. Next up, building in the bear market. Kingdom informed with a nice summary of what DFK has been doing in the last couple of months. There were many challenges and I'm still a bit critical that the team has again forfeited their roadmap, but the building never stopped. Nice little recap to see what DFK has been doing. Next up, the volume. DeFi Kingdoms is becoming, or maybe always was, one of the main players in the GameFi space. The volume in the last weeks is on par with that of the bigger names such as Gods Unchained and even higher than Sandbox. Axie Infinity still rules supreme, however, some days Jewel even surpasses them in volume. Not too shabby. And I'll finish this section with a shout out to DFK Today. It's a free app with loads of information regarding your DFK holdings and heroes on both Serendale and Crystalville, so take a look for yourself. And now a look at the charts. We've had a pretty depressing year for all DFK assets and I don't want to dwell on 2022 for much longer. In general, the markets have had a strong start of the year and Jewel has made some nice gains. But to be fair, the prices were so incredibly low that I feel that it's still a bit underwhelming. Let's start with Jewel. Jewel has made about a 50% gain since the start of the year and is now at the 30 cent resistance. It's been resistance for a while here. We've seen continuous higher loads and there seems to be more and more excitement around the project again. The good thing, when we cross this 30 cent there's so much room due to the inefficient selling we saw around June 2022. Often we see the reversal go just as fast. My first targets are 47 cents and after that 80 cents, making for a 55% and a 175% move. Much of all this depends on the continuation of the entire market though, and especially again Bitcoin regaining and holding 25k. Crystal. 
Crystal has got a lot more work to do. First, we need to reclaim the area between 0.097 and 11 cents. I'm not seeing a real catalyst here, unless it's the new mechanics to sell locked crystal and the gambling thing. My best bet here would be to put your crystal in jewel until it does get over that 11 cents resistance. Above that, there's a vacuum all the way up to 16.5 cents, making for a 50% move. Jade. Jade had, unsurprisingly, a rough time. There is simply too much supply with all the mining and gardening jade coming onto the market. It seems to have found some sort of temporary bottom here, and there's something to say about it pairing the crystal price. If that's the case, then there is around a 30% move up possible. But if you want to play it safe, like I am, I'll just continue selling it for Jewel until I see some real strength. Tears. If you had the bright idea to invest in tears after the release of pets, you've made a great call. It totally came out of left field for me, and only when I found out that the tears needed to hatch a pet were getting more expensive than the pet itself, I started to take note of it. Shame really, because this was a monster move of around, I cannot even really see it, but around 90,000, 19,000% since August 1st. Personally, I'm getting eggs faster than the required 200 tiers, which also means that I'm now just holding these eggs until either the price of tiers go down or the price of pets go up. It's similar to the issue I showed earlier with alchemy where the ingredients are more expensive than the potions you can create. Honestly, I don't know where this will go, but the demand is very high and I won't see that go down anytime soon. For now, I'm just unloading my tears every day and putting them into Jewel. Clay. Clay has made some nice gains in the last couple of days, but it is at resistance now. Above that, there is a lot of room to grow, I wouldn't get in here, but wait and see if it can make that 33 cents support. Targets over that will be 48 cents and then one dollar. I hope that the clay price increase will have a positive effect in Jade and Jewel, but for now I'm not seeing it yet. And as mentioned before, the problem with a higher clay price and not a higher Jade price is that questing in Serendel is becoming expensive. If this continues, Questing will become a net negative and that's something to be concerned about. Again, that's why only my gardeners and miners are working there. In conclusion, if the markets remain positive and Bitcoin regains 25k, my eyes are mostly on Jewel and perhaps on Clayton. There is some real room to grow to 47 and 80 cents. It's kind of funny to say that when Jewel at its high time was above $20 or something, but we get what we can, right? I'll be back posting more content. This channel will give you information and tips on trading, DeFi and GameFi, with DeFi Kingdoms being one of the pillars. So if you enjoyed that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and my Twitter. And if you found the video useful, be sure to like and comment so more people can find the content. Thanks so much for making it till the end and have a great day.